All right, everybody, welcome to our broadcast today. So my name's Trevor, and I'm going to be hosting. I want to talk to you guys about Amazon for just a minute. Um, a lot of you guys, in fact, I would venture to guess most of you in some way or form are a um, Amazon shopper. Most of my new clients, I'll ask you, hey, where do you shop online? What's your go-to place? 75% or more of you will say Amazon. That's your spot. And I respect that. We're Amazon shoppers too at my house. But when when we teach uh, drop shipping on eBay, and and let me just say this about our retail drop shipping strategy. Remember, when I say retail drop shipping, I'm saying that you're taking a normal retail priced item from Amazon or or Walmart or Target or or Sears or whatever the whatever the case may be, and you're copying and pasting that information onto eBay. You're marking up the price and you're selling it, right? That's the retail drop shipping strategy. And a lot of times I get pushback on that, and your inclination is to say, well, why would somebody do that? Why would they spend more money? Why wouldn't they just buy it directly from Amazon? And I get why you think that because so many of you guys are loyal Amazon shoppers. And then your next point you'll always make to me is you always say, well, you know, everybody shops on Amazon because Amazon's the best. Amazon's the cheapest. And uh, that's where I'm going to disagree. Amazon is not always the cheapest. In fact, I couldn't find the study. I was going to find it and show it with you guys or show it to you guys. But they did a study last year. Walmart.com is actually cheaper than Amazon.com on on shared items, on items that they both carry by several percentage points. So when we, we jump to this conclusion that everybody shops on Amazon because you always get the best deal on Amazon because Amazon's always the cheapest, that's flat out wrong. That's not true at all. Amazon is not always the cheapest and people overpay on Amazon all the time. And I guess your question to me might be, well, what does this have to do with my eBay business? Well, I just want to make a point here today and just tell you that just because you know you don't think that it's possible to start a business selling items that are priced higher on eBay just because you wouldn't personally pay more um, doesn't make it any less of a viable strategy. And because a lot of you guys tend to think that Amazon's just cheapest across the board, I just wanted to show you guys some examples that Amazon is not always the cheapest, yet people who are loyal to Amazon simply just blindly buy there because they make that assumption. And I think it's it's worth looking at this for just a minute so you can understand that consumers are consumers and they all shop a little differently. And this idea that all of them shop exactly like you where you go out and hunt around and find the best price is simply just not true. People are loyal to certain places, and Amazon's a good example of that. And loyal sometimes to a fault to where they're paying more. And that relates back to our eBay business because there's a lot of, e a lot of equally loyal eBay shoppers that shop there no, no matter what. And I, th I, think that's, I think that's just worth exploring. So. I've got a few examples of products that are found other places online that uh, are priced higher on Amazon currently right now, and uh, I want to show you guys a few examples of those places. So let me start out. Hold on just a sec so I can get my notes for a couple of these places. All right, I'm going to go down a list of a few things that I had been looking at. Um, let's start here. Okay, here's an item on Amazon. Okay, guys, you see the price on that? What's the price on this item? $16.74, right? And if you can if you can see it has seventy two customer reviews. If it's got that many customer reviews, people have been buying it on a regular basis. Sixteen seventy four is the price. 
does this exist elsewhere at a cheaper price? Um, and, and it does. And I'll show you at least one place where it does. Now this was in stock earlier, it's now out of stock, but I found this online. Of course, for, for our video, it shows up out of stock. I'll have to watch this. This was five bucks and it was at free shipping too. Seriously, that's the same product, guys. Five bucks in free shipping from this random site on the internet. It's almost 17 bucks on Amazon in free shipping. Right, that's, that's pretty significant. Let me show you another example. Um, let's look at this item here. Same site, six bucks and free shipping. And this is in stock on Amazon. And this is the same product. The picture's just a little bit different. See, there's the picture there. Right, same item, clicking back and forth. Six bucks and free shipping. This one is um, 12.50 and free shipping with 44 customer re reviews. People have been buying this, okay? Is Amazon the cheapest? No, in this case, this other site is. Are people still buying it off of Amazon even though there's a cheaper option there? Of course they are. And that's what we're seeing here. Let's, let's do an exa another example. I've got a whole bunch of them, so I'm just gonna run you through a whole bunch here. Here's a product right here. This is a handheld inhaler. Okay, this is from walmart.com at 20 bucks, free shipping on Amazon. It's almost $36 in free shipping. Right? That's pretty significant, isn't it? 20 bucks all the way up to 36. Is Amazon always the cheapest? No. Are people still buying this here? You bet they are. Why are they why are so many people just blindly buying it on Amazon because because they have such a great reputation, right? They've got such tremendous brand equity um that that I mean they eliminate shoppers a lot of times. Like people just assume this is this is my best price. Like they come onto Amazon and they're just looking for an inhaler and they find this, it's got good reviews and then and then they buy it not not thinking to go shop the entire internet. Let's look at another one. Here's a product too, or a product here. This is called Earth 2 Hot Girl. It's for uh, 12 bucks. Show you the link to Amazon. Amazon, twenty six fifty. Okay, it's pretty significant, isn't it? That's the same product. Now, granted, I have to add in the shipping, so there's four dollars of shipping. So really, this is like sixteen bucks. But still, that's people are paying ten extra dollars right here on Amazon for the same thing, right? Here's another one from the same site. Okay, this is a little Earth 2 Superman figure. 950 on Amazon. You're at 12 bucks plus 682 shipping. So what is that? 12, 18, almost 19 bucks. Not a ton of margin there. There's a little bit of margin. Assuming you, you know, sold this on Amazon. But that's not really the point I'm trying to make. Um, let's see if we can find some other things here.
All right, here's one. I've got a whole bunch of these, particularly from this big bad toy store. Sons of Anarchy, six inch figure, seven bucks. Amazon, 20. Now, granted, this is six bucks plus four dollars shipping, or seven bucks, so that's eleven dollars. Um, people are paying 20 on Amazon. Okay, how about this one? Are you bored yet? I, I could keep doing this. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a lot of examples of this. Here's another one. Um, the Legend of Zelda. Okay, another little figurine. This is 31 plus four dollars shipping, so 35 bucks. On Amazon, same item, seventy-six dollars. Oh, that's more than double, isn't it? Hold on. I'd like that's that's pretty significant. That's double, right? Same product, guys. So not to not to make you you waver on whether or not you want to shop Amazon, I just want to make an over an overarching point here tonight. I promise you, price is important to some people. Okay, some shoppers really care about price, and I'll bet those that care enough about price and are good enough on the internet, if they're a normal Amazon shopper. Well, they might find this little link figurine for 75 bucks and think this is definitely something I need to buy my son or my daughter for their birthday. They may they may actually find it here on this site for half the price and buy it from these guys. But I, I, I would be willing to bet that there's a good enough base of users of Amazon who simply just look at it and say, yep, this is what I want. And by the way, because it's Amazon, I think it's probably a great deal. I'm just going to go with it. And they overpay. This this relates directly back to, to what I'm talking about with eBay. I've gotten some concerns from a few clients over the last few weeks that have told me, you know, people people buy what's cheapest, always. And if I'm selling something on eBay that's marked up, but I could get it elsewhere cheaper like Amazon that people are automatically just going to buy it from Amazon or from some other supplier. And I'm here to tell you guys, I can make cases for this that within the retail world, there's a lot of price variation and, and there's not always shoppers that shop exactly like you and price shop. There's just, there's not, there's plenty of people that are really loyal to their place. And there are very loyal eBay shoppers where that's where they shop. That's their spot. And uh, you know what? They don't, they don't go out and price shop other, other sites. And so if you're priced, even though you're much higher, right, you'll still close sales. Just like on Amazon, you have reviews from nine customers who likely bought it for this $75 price. It could have been lower or higher because the price will fluctuate a little bit depending on inventory and stocks and suppliers, but likely they probably paid about this amount. So guys, that's significant. We call this in, in, the, in the world of retail, we call what we're doing here retail arbitrage, where, where you find it cheaper at one retailer, you sell it on another site at a higher price, and have that retailer ship it out. It's it's a very well-known strategy amongst internet marketers. I feel like I'm constantly having to um, sort of defend it against skeptics. And, and I don't blame you for being skeptical, right? You shop how you shop. And some of you guys really do find the cheapest price. But I'm here to say that not everybody does that. And that's why this strategy works. And don't misconstrue. I mean, if if you're going to, I mean, we're certainly concerned about price and we'd like to work with suppliers that can get us better prices and we often do. But if you're, if you're coming into your internet business and your, your competitive advantage 
is that you're going to have the cheapest price, then you need to not be doing drop shipping. You need to change your strategy altogether. Because if you think cheapest price is going to be your competitive edge, then you need to go out and get a warehouse or consider buying in bulk from suppliers and carrying your own inventory, stocking it, and doing your own shipping. That is the only way that you're ever going to really compete in, in, in a price type environment, right? If that's your edge, then the only way you can do it is through bulk ordering, okay? Now, I'm not saying that you can't do it a little better through drop shipping, but you're not going to be the best price that way. So you have to rely on better marketing, better keywords, more listings, um, if you're, if you're going to compete a little bit better. So I just want to make that clear to you guys. I think some of you guys come in to your internet business saying to yourself, you know what, I'm just going to get a better price and I'm going to mark it down and then I'm going to sell the crap out of it because everybody's going to want it for me because I'm priced better. Um, having done this now for the past 10 years, it's very rarely, if ever, that I've had the best price on anything. And, and yet I still make sales. And, and I, I attribute that to better marketing, not because I had better suppliers with, um, with better prices. Not to say that you can't go that route, but the point today here is that there's, uh, there's portions of the market that, uh, that, that aren't perfect. And this assumption that Amazon is the cheapest is, is not always correct. So I hope that opens your eyes a little bit, guys. Hope that I hope that makes some sense to you as you if you as you listen to me sort of ramble on tonight. I think there's value in understanding that while price is important, it's not the only factor. And a lot of times, loyalty to a, a shop, a store, or a brand outweighs the common sense of going and finding it at a cheaper price. Uh, cheaper price. Okay, guys, does that make sense? Let me see if I can find one more that might be interesting to look at. Oh, here's one. I'll show you this and then we'll finish up. I've got a whole bunch of other examples, but I don't know if you want me to sit here and bore you to death with more of these. This is a 25 inch uh, plastic megaphone for $23. Okay. And on Amazon, right here, thirty seven twelve is your price on Amazon for that item, thirty seven twelve and free shipping. This is 23 here, okay? The deals are out there to be had. A lot of times it's Walmart. Walmart has some of the cheapest prices on the internet, period. So if you're looking to get into the sort of the retail arbitrage game, Walmart to Amazon is a good one, a good one or Walmart to eBay. You know, we could probably look up this same item on eBay and likely, if it's even being sold at all, We'll see if it is. I'm going to do a quick search here on eBay and see. We'll see if we can find a similar item. This looks similar. This is selling for 28, like 29 bucks. Okay. Yeah, I don't see many that are the same though. And that's the other thing too. Like we quickly assume that you know, our, the items we list from a place like Walmart onto eBay, there's already a whole bunch of them listed. Like, I'll bet a lot of you guys didn't think to sell a, a white plastic megaphone. You could probably sell this on eBay for 30 bucks or more and potentially make sales on it because I don't see anything really comparable. There's this one right here, but I don't even know if that's the same product. I, in fact, I don't even think it is. So that's the cool thing. You could be the exclusive item um, on eBay for an item, right? Like you're the exclusive. Nobody else on eBay is selling that item. And then price becomes almost irrelevant to a point because you don't really have any of that competition. Okay. 
Okay, guys, hope that was enlightening. I look back at this webinar, and I'm like, what was, what was the whole point, right? Well, to understand the market in general and understand that everybody doesn't shop perfectly when it comes to the cheapest price, okay? Lots of evidence of that today. I hope that helped. Guys, we'll see you all next week for some more eBay training. Thanks for coming along.